be crazy <laughs> if Jimmy Garoppolo, let's say he closes out the year, they win the next two games, 5-0, and oh, right. right? And he plays well, which he has already. If he then ends up leaving San Francisco. It'd be unbelievable. Well, they can't let that. Then they would be forced to franchise him. I'd have to put a tag on him. As a Redskins fan. But, I, I mean, it. he probably wants to choose a team. I agree with Chad. He wants to have that same position where I think Kirk wants to choose his own right. team at some point. Wouldn't you? I mean, if you had yeah. that level of skill and yeah. you reach that level, I, I'd want to choose my own faith. As a Redskins fan, though, I get a perverse satisfaction out of Kyle and Sean shaming the crap out of Steiner the way they are right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's, it's just great. unbelievable. I love the fact that Sean McVay is going to be the coach of the year. And they had him in the building, and they let him walk. Yeah, but what are they going to do? And yet you like Jay Gruden for the most part. So he was underneath Jay Gruden. Look, I know it's easy to say it I, now. I get painted as like a Jay Gruden apologist for whatever reason. I guess because you just want to run him out at every opportunity. But if, if you came to me and said, which of these two guys do you want to pick? McVeigh and Gruden. I know part of this is revisionist history because he's killing it, and they just went and, and boat raced the Seahawks last week in Seattle. I would have said, Gruden, you're okay. I'll take the young up and comer, Sean McVeigh. Yeah, but I'll the take reason, Gates, I say it is because when we had discussions of the offseason, you were pro extending Jay Gruden, which I thought was moronic. Not that it matters in the end. Dan Snyder eats a lot of money, yeah. but I found no reason to extend a guy who had taken the team to the playoffs once and had a sub-500 record. Why would you give him an extension? And I don't understand the whole bring him back now for, again, a guy who's seven games under 500. I think he's a fine coach, but is he special? Going to take you to the next level, which to me next level is consistent playoff team winning 11, well, 12 already, games a season. We've already talked about I don't the, see it. What I think is the main reason he got the extension is because there was so much going on with the franchise that was – Negative, and I think that was around the time the whole McLuhan thing yeah. was simmering. That that it's the classic Redskins move. Hey, don't look over here. Don't look at the disaster that's unfolding. Look at this shiny new two-year extension yeah. for Jay Gruden. That coupled with the fact that Gruden and his family are tight with Bruce Allen, they go way back. There's a relationship there. Hey, we're gonna give you some extra money. You're gonna stick around. That whole thing. So it's not really on his coaching merits. It's a lot on connections, who you know, who you're plugged in with. I get why it happened. And as I said earlier this week, first of all, I'm not venomous towards Jay Gruden. I just don't understand why so many people want to give him a pass. Because to me, it's beyond this year. Okay, this year he had a bunch of injuries, but what about the end of last year? And everybody wants to get past My theory is he's just a nice and, guy. And he's the word that I love, th- this word I love, continuity. Because right. the Redskins, all the Again, do. to shoot down your continuity, then the Rams should have stuck with Jeff Fisher. No, no. All, all the Redskins continuity. do is churn through Head coaches. Nobody lasts more than two or two and a half Rex years. Rex Ryan should have stayed in Buffalo. Continuity. No, you're missing my point. The Rams. How long was Fisher with the Rams? Forever. Yeah, it was. A, it was an eternity. The, the, the Redskins don't have that sort of track record under Dan Snyder. It's two years. Throw that guy out. Bring somebody else in. At least with Gruden, you've had a guy now who's in four, four with Gruden. Yeah. At this point, that just doesn't happen. In- Snyder era. At some point, you have to stop the churn and burn with the head coaches. Before you move on from this story, I, I hear this sentiment a lot from football hipsters. Do you guys believe that Blake Bortles and the Jaguars are capable of going into Foxborough in the winter and winning a game against no. New England? No, most season? likely not. Though, no. though I will say this, that defense will travel with them. I get it, but... But th- Blake Bortles will be their undoing at some point. When he's forced to win a game, especially if it's against a guy like Ben or Brady... He's not going to win that head-to-head matchup. A Florida matchup. team, that time of the year. Look, maybe in two or three years, if Eli or Kirk or somebody's their quarterback, but not this year, no. I just think that seems to be a trendy thing to predict. By the way, you'll probably name somebody obvious, but is Fournette the rookie of the year? Or do you give it to Sean yeah, Watson, Kamara. even though he missed half the season? Kamara. 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 Yeah, he's, yeah, he's there's close. the obvious yep. one that I forgot. If Watson hadn't gone... Hadn't have gone down with a oh, knee injury. Man. It was Kareem Hunt until they took that it's nose true. dive. Yep. That guy was a juggernaut. A lot yep. of good rookies. That's true. Uh, so, Drab, you can chime in on this because it's about your Seahawks, but Bobby Wagner and Earl Thomas are beefing, and apparently Bobby Wagner said that the guys ironed things out, but Earl Thomas said on Twitter, there wasn't no conversation. Mm. Can we stop it? It is what it is. We move on. If that's how you a, feel. Beefing that's just how you has feel. a negative connotation. Beef is a delicious thing. St- we got any beef in there? <laughs> it's so good. Breakfast anyway, it's just an aside. Uh, they're falling apart. They're, they hate each other because, you know, everybody always knew that the Seahawks, once they started to lose games, that 
everything they would turn on you each just other. Unravel. And it's and Pete Carroll has no control over this. Right. Team. He sits there with a dumb look on his face. <laughs> they have the most penalized team in the league. There's no discipline. The, the, the you know inmates run the place. He's so. in great shape though. So Great Wagner course. questioned yes. Thomas for not playing because he had a bad hamstring. He Is said the after the game, after they just got blowed out, he yeah. said, "I think that Wagner probably shouldn't have played." Hey, he, look at look at Drab McNair Jr. over there with the yeah. inmates <laughs> run. Ah. Bit. I like. <laughs> look at you. Um, <laughs> that he said he should, and then Bobby Wagner said, "Keep my name out of your mouth." And then Bobby Wagner said, oh, we patched it up. We spoke." And then Earl Thomas said, "Nah, we never spoke." <laughs> yeah, Thomas whatever. said, "Nah, ain't no patching." That's good. Was that? <laughs> About that game on Sunday, it's not important or anything.